Welcome into the Keon Sports Show. Tonight, our guest, Pat Tanaka, you remember him from Bad Company, as well as later on in the WWF with the Orient Express. I am your host, Vince McKee. Sit back, put your feet up, and enjoy the show. Pat, how you doing? Welcome in. How are you? It's good, it's good to hear from you again. How's everything going? Hey, everything's been going great. You know, we uh, we have a very dedicated professional wrestling fan base here. We've had a just a flood of wrestlers on the last couple of weeks from Nikita Koloff to Tito Santana, uh, Tom Pritchard. Yeah, Tom Pritchard, Ricky Morton. We've been we've been loading up on the pro wrestling, which is great because I'm a I'm a huge fan. So I wanted to wanted to start the. Loaded there with some really big, big legends there, man. Yeah, we've we've been blessed with that. I wanted to ask you, um, your father, uh, Duke Kamuka, was a professional wrestler. What did you learn from him growing up, and how much did his involvement in the business fuel your desire to be a part of it as well? Well, I mean, uh, my father, um, um, you know, he never talked about our business. Uh, to the kids, to the family, it was like uh, a subject you didn't talk about. Okay. You know, uh, everybody asked me, "Oh, your dad's on TV," and I, you know, I didn't even know because <laughs> I never watched it. So you know, I really wasn't allowed to talk about it. And um, I don't know, it was weird, weird going up that way. But then after, I just, I, I don't know. I started refereeing, setting up the rings when I was young. And uh, got into the business, you know. They actually went like to, you know, do some things, and heck, I love doing it. You know, your first taste of tag team success came when you started teaming with Paul Diamond, who would be your partner for a long time in, in different teams, to to form a Bad Company. Bad Company with Paul Diamond and yourself, very popular. Why do you think you and Paul Diamond had such great chemistry? I, you know. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't know why we had, but all I know is I'm not sure it was all chemistry. I think Paul was amazing in the ring, man. You know, that guy could go, and it was great, you know, because, I mean, I was so small, you know, and, and he made up for the size, you know, and it helped me out a lot, you know. And I couldn't pick someone smaller than I was or, you know, same size. It really wouldn't have gone well. So early on, get somebody you know a little bit bigger. That's true. That's actually a good point. I never thought about it like that. Um, you know, working in the AWA as well, you guys had a program with the Midnight Rockers. Could you tell at that time that Shawn Michaels had a potential to be something great? I mean, everybody knew that. I mean, I mean, he was one of the greatest workers in this business. Him and Marty. I mean, no doubt they were both incredible, you know. And and to say that, you know, Sean made it and Marty didn't, you know, that's no justice there, you know. I mean, some people, you know, I mean, uh, some people catch that break and go, you know. And some people have bad breaks, you know. And, and I tell you what, it wasn't because any lack of work for Marty, you know. You know, he was amazing touring, I mean. Incredible worker. One of the best in the business, no doubt. And Shawn Michael as well. The greatest workers in the business, man. Your manager during that stretch was Diamond Dallas Page. You know, a lot of people don't realize it, but for a long time, that's all he was was a mouthpiece. Did he ever talk to you about transitioning into the ring one day? Did he ever show interest while you were talking with him as a manager? Oh, uh, we were right off the bat. You know, I mean, he, I mean, you know, I mean, that he wanted to be a wrestler. You know, and, um, I mean, I, I knew he would make it. You know, he had that he had that gift, man. You know, just uh, putting it all together for him. So, <clears throat> I mean, up there in age when he started, but hey, you know, he made it bigger than most people ever even would make it if they were like 15. Started at 15. I mean, you know, he did. He made it huge and he surpassed so many guys. You know, looking at things too as they are now, you know, a lot of wrestling fans don't realize that back in the day there was there was territories. Everything was territories. 
and the, the WWF at the time started buying things out. Why do you think that you know the a the AWA and Vern Gagne chose to go out of business instead of ever really selling to Vince McMahon? Was he just too much of a man of principle and pride to do that? Um, you know, honestly, that kind of stuff I have no idea about. And um, you know, I think it's where you know. I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's like it's worse than you know fighting Goliath. You know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yep. it's like, you know, why, why? After all these years and he built such a name and, you know, why do that? You know, I mean, take a bow out, we did great. You know, we had how many years, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you're talking about Rory, am I correct? Yeah, Vern Gagne, absolutely. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he took a bow out and, you know, he did the right thing. I mean, um, it, it really hurt every territory in the world. And um, I think I think it was just, you know, I mean, it hurt a lot of people. I mean, really. I mean, even us, you know, in the WWE, you know, we hated to see all that go because, I mean, that meant if you didn't have a job there, you didn't have a job anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, very true, and I mean, I think Dr. Death, uh, Tom Pritchard told me the same thing the other day, and uh, yeah, and a couple of the WDF guys have told me that over the years, certainly, you know, and when you, when you signed with the with the WWF, they paired you with Sato and the legendary Mr. Fuji, and they made you, uh, you know, the Orient Express. Were you excited for that, or were you kind of surprised that, you know, they wanted to, you know, make you, you know, Japanese and, and go that angle instead of you know, sticking to the true bad company character. Well, I mean, it wasn't, um, um, I'm trying to, well, I mean, when I went in, right, it was, you know, they were, they wanted, um, I guess it was to give the little guys a try, you know? You know, because they'd never really tried it before. You know, so, I mean, and given us that gimmick, you know, it's probably the best thing. If we came in as bad company, I don't think we would have made it. Yeah, that's a that's a good point too. I mean, it, it, they already had, uh, you know, gimmicks somewhat like that, so I could see that. Now, a big match for you guys, uh, the Orient Express, was when you beat the Rockers at WrestleMania Six in front of sixty-seven thousand people in Toronto at the Sky Dome at WrestleMania Six. The Rockers were very, very popular, and you guys won. It was one of the, the largest crowds in WrestleMania history at that point. How much of a thrill was that and, and gratification of years of hard work to get a victory like that at such a big stage? You know what? When you said that just now, I said, did we really win that one? <laughs> I, I didn't even know we did, to tell you the truth. Okay. I can't even remember the thing now. But you can't, I mean... And what is was more of that we got to be in WrestleMania. You know, not just I don't know, it was, you know, win or lose or what I mean, big deal, you're in it. You know? Sure. And uh God almighty, you know, I when you said it just now I go, I don't know if he's right about that. <laughs> I <was gonna laughs> check. I wasn't saying anything yet. You know, <laughs> honestly, I don't remember winning in WWE at all. <laughs> uh, you know. Well, you did, and then, you know... I mean, you know what? I mean, if you were there, you know, it really didn't matter. As long as you had a great match, who cares, right? Yeah, very true, very, very true. And then, you know, later on on the card, though, that was always known as the big WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. And for the first time in many, many years, Hulk Hogan lost the big match cleanly. He got pinned one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Do you kind of remember at all, maybe a, a general consensus, uh, be you know, backstage or in the, the locker room with the boys? Did anybody feel it was a mistake taking the title off of Hogan and putting it on the Warrior? Um, tell you the truth, I don't. I mean, that was like, um, hmm. I didn't think anybody really thought it was like a mistake or anything. But, you know, we didn't know how it would pan out, though. We knew that. We were kind of, like, worried. And, 
You know, I mean, you put it, you scrap, you unstrap him. He's the one that changed professional wrestling. Hulk Hogan did. Mm-hmm. It became a whole different ball game for him. You know, it became a household name. You know, I mean, he he put us on the map, no doubt. I believe that because it really didn't change until he came in. Very true. Um. You know, later on, l- later on in your WWF career, uh, Paul Diamond came in, you know, and, and came in to, to uh, replace Sato. So what they did is, you know, because obviously Paul Diamond is not Japanese and he, he couldn't fulfill that gimmick. They put a mask on him and they tagged him with you and you stayed on as the Orient Express. Was that, you know, was that good to have Paul Diamond with you? Did it kind of feel like you were back home with him a little bit? Oh my God, it was awesome. I'm the one who said, please, you know, if you're, I can't because it, I was going to do single. You know, and that would have been a huge mistake. You know, I'm too small, you know. And um, I had asked, I said, Paul is sitting at home right now, can I go ask him, you know? And he goes, get him on the phone. I got him on the phone, you know, next day he was with me. And uh, Kate Grotto, yeah. And um, I asked Vince, can I take off these damn boots? He said, yes. <laughs> I stripped them off, man. I hated those things. I couldn't work with them on. Oh, man. And it was a great feeling to work with Paul again. We, we definitely tore down the house. That was awesome. Uh, two last questions for you, and, and thank you for talking with me tonight. After a stint in ECW, you signed with the WCW um, you know, here here we go later on in, in uh, your career. The WCW, when you were there, they were really starting to hit a boom period. Could you could you tell that even for a short little while that WCW was going to be the first major competitor to the WWF for a while with the Monday Night Wars? Absolutely. I mean, well, when you think about it, there was WWF and WCW's wrestling room, really, if you look at it. I don't think we were missing anybody out of that one. You know, I mean, everybody that I was with in WWF was with me in WCW, so, you know, and then some. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, yeah, yeah. You saw everybody pretty much the same dressing room. Yeah, you you reunited with Diamond Dallas Page, and then you got Hulk Hogan over there at that point. Rowdy Piper comes over, you know, uh, Lex Luger and Macho Man, on and on down the list. Absolutely. Um, last question for you tonight, and, and thank you again for taking some time to speak with us here on the program. Um, what can you tell us about Tanaka Productions? That is my pro wrestling school, and it's here in Fargo, North Dakota. Right now, we are in uh, transition, moving into a new building right now. And... Um, I tell you what, you know, being from, you know, Florida and, you know, coming from a wrestling place, you know, where all the pro wrestlers are and everything, I come here. Got the biggest fans in the world, and you got so many guys that want to be pro wrestlers. And I think that, you know what, I'm training guys now, I think I'm going to have a couple of huge superstars. You know, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, we are looking forward to see, you know, who comes out of that school, and definitely they're going to be learning from one of the best of all time. So, you know, I want to go ahead. I wish, want to wish you the best of luck. We'll stay in touch, and you have a great night, sir. You too. Thanks a lot for having me on. Everybody, thank you for all the years of just supporting me in this business. Thank you very much. Love you all. Oh, thank you, sir. Take care. So that was Pat Tanaka of Bad Company. Also, uh, the Orient Express, I know a lot of you remember the WWF years with the Orient Express um, tagged up with um, Paul Diamond, like we said, uh, Sato as well, with the uh, late, great Mr. Fuji running the show. For Keon Sports, this has been Vince McKee. Have a good night, everybody, and we will see what we could do, actually, while I'm thinking about it. Um, I will do my best, can't make any promises. We've had a ton of huge names, and I mean huge names on the show the last two weeks has been amazing i will see what i can do to get paul diamond on as well have a great night